Hi everyone and welcome back to our computer vision series where we're diving into the world of OCR or optical character recognition and this is episode 5 with our OCR continued and in this video we're going to be focusing on handling noisy photos and boosting accuracy or methods to generally help improve accuracy. This is a very important part of OCR since having a high accuracy is clearly important for us since the detected text is going to be continuing or it's going to go on to be used in our algorithms and that's the direction that we're going to go and continue with this series to basically we're going to discuss our noisy photos and in the upcoming episodes we're going to continue our implementation of OCR to build a data frame and then we're going to use the data detected from OCR with our data frame to plug it into a ML or NLP related algorithm. So that is the direction we're heading but we're going to focus on this in a more theoretical and compact sense to discuss noisy photos. And I'd like to thank Gregory for asking, and I apologize if I pronounced that wrong, for asking in a previous video about handling noisy photos. It was an excellent question. It's definitely something that has to be considered. And on a note, to pause for a second, we really appreciate, and I really appreciate your feedback in the videos. I love the discussion, so keep the questions coming. It's great to discuss them. It's just an awesome element and method of learning further. So here we need to know how to handle noisy photos. Since our environments or images that we're gonna run OCR on might not be the most optimal conditions or we need to improve accuracy in general, you know, how many blurry photos or lower quality photos have we seen that would be difficult to apply OCR on? We're gonna take this theoretical view at this moment and we're gonna run some simple examples right after. So when we're handling photos or files for OCR, we have to think about the distribution of the file that we're going to run the OCR on. So are they made up of icons, images, text, text only, are the images stretched, compressed, etc. You know, how do we think about what actually noise is or what is a noisy photo? And it's really a random variation of brightness or color in an image that can make it difficult to read. So a noisy photo has a lot going on. The quality of the noisy photo, we're thinking about a busy image or something that's going to really interfere, maybe overlapping colors. It's going to make it very hard to run OCR on, or it's going to influence the quality or accuracy of our OCR. We can think of it as for the purpose of this with our noisy photos as improving the quality of the image for improving the accuracy and think of it in terms of an example, let's say we have a file with icons, images, and text, and OCR on it is around 20% accurate. Then we have a file with only text and it's 70% accurate. Or we enhance the file or pre processed it to boost the quality and now it's 30% more accurate than the original. Or we stretch the images or images with a lot of characters, colors, and other information on it, and the detection is at a 10%. So to be clear, I'm making these values up but it's more of a thought experiment to think about how these files are and how to handle them. Now, Tesseract does various pre-processing internally and uses the Leptonica library. So scaling or rescaling is another option as well to help reduce noise. And that would be to edit the size or scale of the file. OpenCV also does help with noise and they have a built-in function in the algorithm. And we can see it with the following. So we can see that there's actually a property of noise and it's generally considered to be a random variable with a zero mean. If you want to look into some further information about that, you can click on the link here. And let's dive in a little further before we just run some quick examples. And for some of these examples on how to improve accuracy and deal with noise, you can try binarization or converting an image from black to white. Now, Tesseract does do this internally, but it might not have the most optimal results compared to an original image format. You can also use rotation or stretching and condensing of images. So if the photo is taken at a specific angle, you can always try and rotate it. If you want to see some additional information, you can always click the following link where the source of this information comes from for the following image examples. So you could try stretching and condensing images to improve quality and another trick to help deal with noise is to remove specific objects such as borders from the page since borders can be added during scanning if you're working with scanned documents or pdfs they can be seen as extra characters so these are a few quick little tricks you can convert to black and white you can experiment 
with the rotation or the way the layout is if it's at any type of angle as we can see right here you can condense or stretch the images if that helps as well there are methods to help deal with noise including removal of specific objects within such as borders now let's dive into some code we're going to run two quick examples just so we're not strictly examining in theoretical purposes i also want you with these code examples to take them and apply them to some of your images as experimentation to see what results you can get all right, so we're back in Spider, and I have the code written out right now because this video, and it was more theoretical, so we're just going to do two quick examples here or discuss them. This was more of a theoretical sense to get some understanding of the noise, how you can improve accuracy and deal with the related information. So let's just examine these very briefly. I really would like if you would do some experimentation, for example, for the first one we're going to go through here, it is for converting to black and white. If you do run any experiments, and have any comparisons and would like to discuss them and share them that would be fantastic i'd be more than happy to take a look so we're working with the pillar library and we can import our file you're going to open it so we're going to have the test file and then we would have our image file to convert it converting it to black and white and we would save the new file so very straightforward very simple couple lines of code in addition to our import statement which we actually don't need since we have it above i'm going to remove that now for the second one, I want to do a little demonstration as well. And again, it's more of a theoretical sense, but we can see if I open example two, we can see the basic document here, the PNG with our code or excuse me, the text we want detected. All right, so let's run this. And again, I'm running these cells here. You can always rename them. It's just for the demonstration purposes. I have them aligned like this. So I'm just going to run the selection just to get our output. So we're going to give it a second for our detected text. And we can see the following output run from our OCR. Okay. Now, if we examine the following, it's shifted. So let's take a look and see how that would output as well. So we have our example to shift copy PNG. Now let's see the comparison. And I, this is for more of a thought experiment on if you have even shifted slightly a document that maybe was scanned slightly in an angle, how it could possibly cause some lower accuracy or lower detections with your document. So let's run this. Let's run selection of our current line. We're going to give it a second to print out the OCR. And as you can see, the detection has changed. Now it is still picking up characters, but it has shifted from our document. So to wrap this up, mainly not concerned right now with the accuracy of this detection and how it's laid out. Just want to demonstrate that based on how the doc document is laid out can influence accuracy. So you have to take that into consideration when you're working maybe with scan documents or other types of images, how the text is laid out. So always great to experiment. Let's wrap this up because this was more of a theoretical video. In the next video, we're going to get started on a longer build out more of an algorithm that we're going to end up using here. We're going to work with data frames. So we're going to take detected text. Let me X that out real quick. We're going to take detected text. We're going to receive the OCR, the data from it, we're going to build it into a data frame. That's what we're going to work on in the next video. And from the data frame, we're going to actually use our detected text in our example to work with a challenge. We're going to present a challenge. We're going to take an NLP or machine learning algorithm. We're going to plug that in with our data frame and we're going to build that and see how our OCR text is kind of used in that pipeline. And we're going to do a little more coding, more hands-on. So, Although this video wasn't intensive coding or didn't have that much coding built into it, I hope you took away some useful information and some very great tips and tricks to deal with noisy images or boosting accuracy for OCR. Keep the questions coming. Fantastic way to learn is to discuss some elements, theories, practical implementations. Keep the questions coming. As always, Subscribe to the Super Data Science channel it is just a fantastic way to stay up to date within the industry, and I will see you in the next video.